Trinity. Yeah, cool, bro. Cool. It's a hard life for four hundred. Well, welcome back, everybody, to Trinity House here in Trinity Square in London, ahead of a, a big press conference, as you can see from this top table. We've rammed everybody on in front of a huge card, Sunday, February the 27th, live on the zone. Lawrence Acoli will make the second defence of his WBO cruiserweight title against Michael Sislak from Poland. It's a tremendous fight. Two absolute elite cruiserweights battling for glory, as I said. Sunday night, something completely different at the O2. For me, the best venue in the country for boxing. It's going to be a tremendous night. And as you can see, stacked with talent. So many different divisions on notice here. So many different fighters at different stages in their career as we will speak to them shortly and, and running through them. Of course, one of the best young prospects in boxing, John Hedges. Uh, of course, Fabio Wardley, a man who's making tremendous waves on the domestic heavyweight scene. Campbell Hatton, fresh from his stoppage victory in Bilbao. Galau Yafai will make his professional debut fighting for a WBC International Championship in just his first fight. The world cruiserweight champion, Lawrence Acoli, the challenger, Mikhail Sislak, and another man from GB Boxing who is sitting here watching these cruiserweight championship belts on the line with big plans himself. Chev Clark will make his professional debut at the O2 as well. Anthony Fowler back from his epic war with Liam Smith at the sold out Echo Arena in Liverpool will return for his first fight in the middleweight division and thank God for that seeing you up in the middleweight division and of course as we continue our international expansion. Dempsey McLean, top 15 in the world in two governing bodies, looking to make his mark on the pro scene in the UK under the tutelage of Tony Sims as he fights Bracamonte at the O2 as well, February 27th. Actually, Dempsey, we'll start with you. Welcome. Um, when you talk about dedication, you've sort of taken yourself and, and your, your partner around the world based in London, of course, had some tremendous sparring with Dillian White in Portugal, with Anthony Joshua, with Dubois recently this week as well, and obviously yourself, undefeated, boxed in uh, uh, the US last time out and ready to fight in London at the O2 on Feb 27th. Yeah, this is pretty much as big as it gets, you know, making my British debut, so i got to really make sure I go out there and put on a good clinic, come away with a nice uh, knockout as well. So it has been a wild four months since I left Australia and, and based myself over here in uh, Essex, and like you said, I was with uh, Anthony Joshua and um, then Portugal with Dillian White, and it's good to come back and just get some proper one-on-one -on -one time with Tony Sims, you know. Before I fought in America, I only spent about two weeks with him and I was just all over the place, went through about four or five different coaches in the different training camps. So I think I've been with Tony now probably about six six weeks straight, getting some good sparring in, good consecutive sparring, and uh, the progress is starting to show. So it's going to be uh, quite amazing when I see after a full training camp with Tony. So, Ariel Bracamonte for you, which we saw have a, a war with Dave Allen last time. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun for you as well. You went through the gears in New Hampshire last time out. These next couple of fights, just about staying active before you throw yourself into uh, the deep end in the summer, really. Like I said, well-placed with the governing bodies, looking to move forward and try and challenge for a world heavyweight title probably in 2023. But a couple of fights under your belt and then moving into a real big one in the summer. Yeah, definitely. This is going to be a busy uh, busy year for me. 2022 is about staying active, getting that experience under my belt, getting some training camps with Tony Sims, getting some good sparring in and uh, climbing those rankings. And yeah, 2023, uh, that's when I can see a uh, world title fight coming. You know, as long as I keep winning, keep working hard, that's the main thing. So um, looking at some bigger names, I know we've been in talks um, towards the end of the year and I'm, I'm more than ready for that. And my team is confident in me as well. So really keen to take on some of these bigger names and climb the rankings quite fast. Yeah, I don't think it's a problem talking about those names. You know, we talked about the likes of Derek Chisora and particularly Joseph Parker, yep. which would obviously be a big Australian New Zealand fight as well. Massive, massive. Um, uh, you know, we were in talks a little bit uh, a while ago, you know, um, when Australia and New Zealand were in the in the bad lockdown, you know, me and Joseph Parker were kind of in talks a little bit because we had the, the trans-Tasman bubble out there. So never really eventuated, but, um, you know, I think now is a good a time more than ever to try and make that fight. You know, the heavyweight division is quite held up at the moment. You know, there's, even if you're a man you're probably not going to get a fight for another one, two years. There's, there's a big lineup at the moment. So I think Parker is probably looking at trying to make those smarter fights, the ones that make sense. Um, and I think I'm, I'm the fight that makes sense to him at the moment, you know. So even though he is a little bit higher ranked than me, it's, it's a perfect matchup and it's a good fight, especially for a matchroom card out in Australia. Yeah, well, we look forward to that. But first, take care of business. Feb 27. 100%. Anthony Fowler, welcome, mate. Up at middleweight now, which I think is, is long overdue. Um, you always sort of prided yourself on 
making 154 pounds, but we always knew how tough it was. Last time out against Liam Smith, he took a huge step up. I mean, it was a, an epic night in Liverpool that will be remembered for a long time. You didn't get the victory, but ready for a new chapter. Um, of course, a lot of Polish support coming at the O2. We've just confirmed your opponent, Lukas Macic, who's a very, very tough fighter from Poland as well, but ready for the journey up at 160 pounds. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm excited to show the new me. Like, I just feel a lot happier in my life now. Like, I'm eating four or five meals a day now, but I used to have to really be strict con constantly. And I never got a break. I was even when I was on holidays, I had to go running and stuff to get my weight down. Where now, I'm just like, I'm down here full time as well with my family now. So I'm not traveling up and down four hours here, four hours there. It was, it was all a lot for me last year. I was tra traveling to London, to Liverpool, trying to become a, be a dad, trying to be a professional boxer. Where this year, mate, I'm just said to myself, you know what, I'm going to come down here full time. I'm going to give it everything I've got this year and then um, see where I end up. You haven't had that many fights as a pro, but when you look at, you know, you had a, the big fight, of course, with Scott Fitzgerald. Last time was a huge fight at Echo Arena. And when I spoke to Jake McGuigan and Shane and the team, there's, although you're moving to 160, you're still not really interested in taking easy fights. You know, you come back with a, with a guy that's going to be coming to win with a lot of support, fit and strong at 160, but, but you've still got the ambitions to have this fight and, and move quickly maybe to a European title shot as well. Yeah, I don't believe in easy fights. I think I'm just kidding myself, boxing like journeyman and stuff. I need to like push myself every fight and show the improvements and have someone come to win. I'm, I'm a Danny, a sacrifice for my life just to box a journeyman. I want to be in proper fights. I said, I said to Jake, do the day in the gym, look mate, I want to have fights. I don't want no gimme fights because I'm better now than I was last fight, and I'm, I'm going to show it come the night. And just a quick word from you, obviously, a lot of these uh, G, former GB teammates you see, like, have watched you go out and fill arenas as a pro now, and, and particularly Chev, and, and I know you're close to Galau as well. Big moments for them, debuting at the O2. You've been there. You probably give them a, a bit of good experience now from the pro ranks, but tremendous talents and, and exciting to see. Yeah, I just say to them, enjoy it, and every fight, make sure, you, like I said, don't have no easy fights, and make sure every fight... They've been boxing at a high level. Like I was an amateur, there's no gimme fight. So if you start getting comfortable with boxing journeyman and stuff, you can get a bit lax of days good and not put it on your sentence at every single camp where if I was days, I'd take gradual steps up and make the championship weight as well. Don't just weigh in like a few pounds over because where you're comfortable because I know myself, them last few pounds are really, really hard when you're so, so lean. Well, I look forward to seeing you back at action in middleweight at the O2 Arena. Chef Clark, Chef, welcome. Um, again, moment, uh, great moment for you coming up. Not far from, from where you're from. O2 Arena, Feb 27, it all gets underway. Tremendous amateur career, of course. Represented GB in the Tokyo Olympics as well. But now, as you look at these guys sizing them up as well, starts getting real for you. That was a bit of a look, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you're not fighting them yet, but Feb 27, the cruiserweight journey starts for you. Yeah, I'm excited. Um close to London, live in Kent, and um, it'll be good to put on a show. You know, people that ain't seen me before think um, they'll be excited to watch me. Obviously, we know what you bring, plenty of skill and, and punch power and explosiveness as well, but like Galau as well, such tremendous experience as an amateur and, you know, not looking to come out and win titles yet in your first fight, but looking to move quickly as well. And, and domestically, it's a fantastic division. Yeah, it's a great division. I think um, the people are being entertained right now and... Um, yeah, I'm looking to move as fast as you're ready to move me. And obviously as well, talking about that support coming in from, from Kent and all around London as well, expecting to be in explosive fights with, with a lot of action and great support. Yeah, most definitely. Look forward to seeing you Feb 27. Chev Clark making his professional debut. We switch up down the other end. Young John Hedges, John, you boxed at the O2 last time. Had tremendous support from yourself and also the crazy Johnny Fisher Army as well in, in effect at the O2. But it's been a good opening period for you, boxed internationally as well on, on a DAZN card and on some big arenas as well. How do you remember that, that sort of first year particularly of your pro career? Yeah, do you know what Eddie, it was, um, it was crazy wasn't it, obviously I signed with you, I had just a massive year, just, I, I signed at just 18, I'm only 19 now, I had a massive year, four fights, went to Austria like you say, last fight at O2 and I think the performances have just been getting better so that's the plan now, go back out, O2 Arena again, massive platform, do the business again in better fashion. You already look like you're a lot older than you were when you first started, and it was only a year ago. Yeah, Getting a bit of a beard on the go. But, here now. but you have you have got tremendous experience already. I mean, you, you're still learning, and you were you were super green yeah. when you started out, but already feel like you've matured as a fighter over that short period with Mark Tibbs. Yeah, properly. Like we're in the gym. Obviously, Johnny's with me. We train hard together, 
and we push each other on the same platform. We've got S Jam behind us, yourself, Eddie, and we just work together well. We train hard, and obviously we're going to start getting the results. And please God, Johnny's out on the 12th, me the 27th, and then we keep pushing forward to the end of the year. And obviously, finally, where do you think you will end up weight-wise? I mean, you are, what, six foot five, six foot six? I mean, six six. Started as a super middleweight. That didn't last long. <laughs> Probably about one fight. Up at light heavyweight. And, you know, you look at these cruiserweights. I mean, eventually, yeah. maybe even a heavyweight division yeah, for John Hedges. To, to be honest, Eddie, I look at Lawrence and yeah. I think I'm going to be like a similar sort of build. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't see me ever being like this massively wide fighter. So I think I'm going to be a lean cruiserweight time I fill out. But I've got a lot of man strength to go yet. And um, I, the main thing is I don't rush it. I'm fighting men. I'm 19. I don't want to be chucked in with the cruiserweights yet. And my body can still make light heavyweight. So I'm going to give my body development time it needs and feel for like, fulfill naturally. And then when it's time, we'll move up. Look forward to seeing the progression continue at the O2. Campbell Hatton, welcome, mate. Thanks for coming down today. I know you cancelled some sparring to come down as well. But last time out, Bilbao, great performance. First stoppage. Um, on the record as well. Great experience altogether going out there for your first international fight. Yeah, um, just want to say thanks for sitting me next to these two as well. I feel like a right short <laughs> ass, but yeah, um, it's like a different fighter over in Bilbao. Showing me patience and composure where at the, in the other fights, I think you could see I was forcing things and trying to do too much. And um, we've gone over there, there's no pressure and it's, we've seen the difference, got that first stoppage, and I think that's a bit of a weight off my shoulders. Obviously, I know there's a lot of talk about when you box at Tottenham, you know, there was literally 65,000 people in their seats when you came out, and it, you were thrown in that, that position. Of course, it's the pressure that comes with your position that you're in as well, but important to get those international fights. But good to be back at the O2 as well. Great arena and, and a big card as well, and you can work on what you learned in Bilbao. Yeah, that's it. Um, there was no pressure out in Bilbao, but... Obviously, we don't want to stay with that. It's massively beneficial to me being on shows like this. And I think that's going to stand me in good stead. But there's no going backwards now. I've shown myself what I can do when I take my time and be patient. And I'm going to do the same again, even on, on shows like this. So looking forward to it and um, another good performance. And Joe Ducker for you, from up from Loughborough, tough opponent. I think he's eight and seven, something like that. Very experienced as well. You know, a step up from last time out. And when you're fighting those Brits, you know they're always going to raise the bar and, and try and get you beat. Yeah, definitely. He's, um, he's got a winning record. He's a step up in opponent and it's going to be a good test for me. But I think where I've forced things and tried doing too much in the past, I think having a bit more of an ambitious opponent who's going to make me think more is going to help me stay switched on and not rush things because I know I can't afford to. So looking forward to it. Look forward to seeing you at the O2 Feb 27. Fabio Wardley, who is just chinning everyone really and knocking everybody out every time he steps up they say it's a step too far he doesn't have amateur experience he only had a few white collar fights whatever you want to call it but continues to be icing everyone in the heavyweight division it's been a frustrating period for you Fabio out with injury but looking forward to returning to action at the O2 on Feb 27th yeah massively massively looking forward to getting back out there obviously it's not great for for any sportsman to have a bit of an injury and having to take time out of the the sport you love but it's sometimes this prevention's better than the cure kind of thing. You kind of have to look after yourself and I'm planning to have a really big year this year so I wanted to go into it fresh, make sure all those those little niggles were sorted and, and, and all ticked off and done and then I can get stuck into having a really big, impactful year this year and hopefully push on to some more belts. I know that Dillian, you know, your management and, and yourself have always been willing to take those steps up, looking to come back and, and ease yourself back in from injury on Feb 27. But some of the names that are mentioned for the summer, you know, I love the fight with Gorman for the British title, but even Marius Wack and De Halpus and, you know, Hammer and bigger names than that, you, you feel like you're ready for those guys now. You've been cruising past that level so far. Yeah, of course. So I've, I've been cruising through the majority of all my opponents, so we need to find a place where I have to take a second almost and have a little stop. And so far, I've been cleaning through everyone pretty easily, so we need to keep pushing, keep, high, keep raising that bar, getting onto higher levels until we get to a point where I find the opponent who I meet in front of me and they don't go within the first few rounds, and then I can really get some experience and really get some learning done. Good sparring on the way. I know you was a big part of Derek Chisora's camp for Joseph Parker, but... 
yourself and Johnny Fisher knocking lumps out of each other in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, um, obviously and on the back end of my injury and stuff, just testing out my body. So I, I jumped in and did a few rounds with Chisora and stuff, which was some great sparring. And and then obviously in the most recent weeks, I've been with Johnny and a few other guys. And the little bump on my lip isn't isn't down to Johnny, but he did give me a few bruises last week. So luckily those, those were off before I turned up here. But... That's the thing, being in with those young, hungry guys like like Johnny, who's just raring to go, does not stop. And uh, especially for heavyweights, it's so someone who maintains a really high pace in sparring, that's that's crucial. Well, looking forward to seeing you back in action, Feb 27. Galau, your fire. Won't ask you too many questions, but you need to get used to these press conferences. And just once again, O2 Arena for yourself. I'm sure your brothers will be there. There'll be a huge amount of support as well from Birmingham ready to kickstart with, you know, I know you've made it clear we don't want, uh, you know, something too tough on Feb 27, <laughs> but very unique to be fighting 10 rounds straight off the bat for a championship title. Yeah, like I said, I didn't want to start off too slow. Um, I know it's not a deep, deep end, but it's um, deeper than usual. Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. Um, make sure I get the win. And most importantly, I want to look good doing it too. And then I can sit back and watch um, my good friend Lawrence defend his bowl title. Just finally as well on those smaller divisions, we know that they haven't always been as glamorous, of course, as the heavier divisions. But right now, you know, the likes of obviously Sonny Edwards is a world champion. You've got Julio Cesar Martinez steps up in a brilliant fight with Chocolatito as well. You've got Estrada um, and Carjas, the champion at, at super flyweight, Joshua Franco. So many great fights down in those divisions as well. And they seem to move quicker and be willing to take more risks down there. But... I want to just ask you about the status of those divisions and I want to get your thoughts as well on Julio Cesar Martinez against Chocolatito. Obviously, Martinez in your division and Chocolatito, who obviously defeated your brother for his world title as well. Yeah, it's never really been a glamorous division, um, but you've kind of helped that now, uh, bringing it to light a little bit. Um, obviously, my brother was the world champion at Superfly. Um, yeah, he lost to Chocolatito. Uh, he's a great fighter. He's a legend. Um, I'm a big fan of his. Hopefully we'll remain watching this. Um, I think Chocolatito beats Martinez. Um, I think it'd be too good for him. But I think Martinez is a great fighter. Um, someone I can look to fight down the line if he's still at my weight. I don't know if you're happy, happy, too happy with that. Um, but we'll see what happens in the future. And I'm just uh, looking forward to the ride. Well, I'll tell you against Julio Cesar Martinez in a, a year or so is a tremendous fight. Um, look forward to seeing the journey start for you, Galau. O2 Arena, Feb 27. We go to the main event. Before I talk up the man to my right, Mr. Ecoli, I want to talk to Michael Sislak and obviously a promoter, uh, uh, translator there as well to help us with this. Mikhail, welcome. This is a, a big, big fight for you for Polish boxing and uh, a, a fight that a lot of people are very excited about. Także Michale, witam. To jest bardzo, bardzo duża walka dla polskiego boksu i bardzo serdecznie Ciebie tutaj witam. Dzień dobry, witam wszystkich. Um, th thank you very much and I welcome everybody. To jest na pewno bardzo duża walka, jeżeli chodzi o polski boks. Sam się nie mogę już jedno czekać, także bardzo się cieszę, że jestem tutaj i że mogę tu być, także cały czas trenuję bardzo mocno, bardzo ciężko i już się nie mogę doczekać walki. It's surely a big fight for Polish boxing and I can't wait to actually attend the fight. I'm training very hard and I can't wait to, to fight. Your thoughts on Lawrence Akoli? It's been very difficult to, to make the unification fights or to get anybody to fight him. Of course, he beat your countryman, Glavatsky as well, but Lawrence generally avoided someone with great power and young, but very dangerous. Także twoje myśli na temat Lorenza Okoli. On walczył z Polakami, pokonał Głowackiego, widać, ale on może boi się troszeczkę mocy. Jak, jakie masz myśli na jego temat? Jest zawodnikiem bardzo niebezpiecznym, mocno bijącym z obu rąk. Jest zawodnikiem obdarzonym bardzo dobrymi warunkami fizycznymi. He's a, he's a, he's a very strong fighter and he, he beats with uh, both of the hands and he's a very strong uh, physically. Ale przy tym po prostu mogę, muszę zrobić swoją pracę, wykonać się w ringu, swoje założenia, które przepracowuję z trenerem i tyle. But I just have to do my work and all the, all the training that we've done with my coach and that's what I'm going to put in the ring. And finally, you certainly have all the experience edges over Lawrence Ecoli. You're confident that on February 27th you become the WBO world champion. 
I teraz e, widziałeś doświadczenia, e, jakie mieli e, ludzie z Lorencem Okoli. Czy jesteś pewny, że 27 lutego możesz zdobyć ten tytuł Mistrza Świata? Jakbym nie był pewny, nie byłoby mnie tu. Także po to trenuję całe życie, po to to robię od 13 roku życia, żeby zostać Mistrzem Świata. If I wasn't sure about it, I wouldn't be here. I've been training since I was 13 years old, so I'm ready to get the title of WBO. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Lawrence, welcome. Um, you know, I was thinking the other day, Lawrence, I didn't even phone your team to ask if you were okay <laughs> with this opponent. You know, it's, uh, I guess, maybe a little bit frustrating for you, but just boxing in general, trying to secure the unification fights. You know, we talked about the winner of Gulamarin against Igorov. That fight got postponed because of COVID. That was a potential opponent for you for, for spring, summer. Um, of course, Makabu is fighting. Um, he's mandatory and hanging on for a shot at Canelo Alvarez. And Maris Bradis has completely lost the plot. I don't know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. But for you, you step up in a fight. This is a fight a lot of people in boxing are talking about. This is an elite cruiserweight. By far, I believe, the toughest fight of your career so far. Yeah, well, f thanks for everyone being here. It's good to be on the table with such amazing people. Um, yeah, I believe on paper this could be one of the hardest fights. It's until you actually get into the ring, you you'll never know what someone's got. But watching Cezak's fights, he's very, um, he's a very good technical boxer, good punch and power, good speed. So it's, all in all, it's, it's it's it poses to be a very challenging fight. But if I believe I'm gonna go on and unify the division, I have to be able to beat people like Cezak and beat them in good fashion. How important is it to get an elite opponent when you're in your head thinking about those big unification fights? It can get a little bit sort of almost frustrating to not deliver those. But when you know you have such a great opponent, it must switch you on as well in camp. Yeah, no, 100 percent. And one of the main things that we focus on in our Cody fit is mindset. You know what I'm saying? So I'm making sure that we, um, you know, practice the mind, practice the body, um, put yourself in challenging situations and hold yourself accountable. Like, I'm made for this. Um, this is this is a, a stage that I was made for. This is a fight I was made for, world title that I was made for. So I'm going to make sure that I go in there and do what I'm meant to do. How focused are you on your boxing these days? I mean, we see a Coley fit, mm -hmm. collaboration with McDonald's, with mm -hmm. Boohoo Man. You're yeah. also a rapper. Mm -hmm. um, you're an author as well mm -hmm. for a best-selling book. I'm yeah. sure, I, th I believe you're a doctor Correct. as well yeah. now as well. So. Yeah. Um, how, how does, you know, where does boxing line up for you? You're still as, as hungry as ever. I mean, I know you've got aspirations to unify the division and go on and, and go on to the heavyweight division, but you're kind of using that as well, the sport as a platform to go on and, and, yeah, and do other and, things. And that's the main thing. The main thing for me is that boxing is my true love and my rocket fuel for all of this other stuff. If I'm not performing in the ring, then none of this other stuff happens. So for me, I find motivation in being able to do a book and being able to do a rap song and being able to collaborate with companies and people that, you know, I, I was fans of or supporters of beforehand. So this is all just a blessing. But at the same time, where I came from, without being funny, doing the whole sub story to where I am right now is a blessing and I want to hold on to that. Of course, my opponent here is here to, you know, make amends for, you know, his country and put on, put on a show. But I have to make sure that, you know, my journey continues in the direction it's going in and we don't have any hiccups. I know you're, you're focused on February 27th, but you do want those unifications as well. It must be frustrating sometimes to see, you know, fights get delayed that might delay your own unification as well and see Maris Bradis and the, the Jake Paul stuff and some of it doesn't really make sense. But you, you're frustrated or you, you're, you're no, focused with no. what you have to do? I, I think nothing of it, ever ever that like, as soon as the fight's made Michael Cizak is the only person that I think of you know I've got his picture in my room um I watch all of his interviews I don't understand any of them but I just like to watch his mannerisms I've watched all of his fights I know him and that's all that I focus on is Michael Cizak after that then we can talk about everyone else well, I know you want those unification fights, but this is a really, really good cruiserweight fight between two elite cruiserweights. The WBO world title on the line. Tremendous card, February 27th at the O2. As we said, the professional debut of Galau Yafai and Chev Clark as well. Anthony Fowler returns in a championship fight at middleweight. World ranked Dempsey McKean cruising through the heavyweight division. Fabio Wardley returns to action. The young charges of John Hedges and Campbell Hatton and much more. We'll see you Sunday night, February 27th at the O2, live on Design. Sit, man. Sit.
się nie dało tak 